Hello everyone, I hope everyone can hear me. Thanks for joining us in this webinar. We are really excited uh, to host this session and speak about the amazing transformation of the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium in Madrid. So let's get started. These are the main outcomes of this webinar. This is what we would like you to take away from this webinar. Uh, how to quickly and effectively identify design issues how to adapt your design solutions uh, derived from the Legion software, and finally, how you can optimize the operation of ex existing stadiums. Now, before we get started, uh, let me quickly go through over some housekeeping items. We have taken a screenshot of an example of the AD interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer. Most likely you are listening in using your computer speaker system, but you can easily switch to the phone if you prefer so. Now for those of you who are viewing this live, you'll have the opportunity to submit questions via the chat box in the question section. So we encourage everyone to submit questions and we'll make sure to address them either during the presentation or later in the Q&A session. And here are some other useful tips for you all. Uh, there is no need to panic taking notes because you will get uh, access to the recording in the next days. You will also be asked to do a small survey uh, after the webinar and uh, of course let's stay connected for upcoming events. Now let's introduce the speakers. I'm really excited uh, first of all to have Enrique Huertas with us today. Enrique is the CEO of Colin Buchanan Consultores, which is a leading international transport planning uh, consultancy. Enrique has more than 20 years of experience in transport planning and modeling projects all around the world. And of course, he has specialized in pedestrian simulation and crowd management. I would also like to highlight here that Buchanan are also our channel partner in the region, and they organize quite, quite often Legion training sessions, either in person or online. So keep an eye for that. And finally, my name is Marius Daflos. I will be the moderator for today's session. I work as a product sales engineer and I'm responsible for Bentley's mobility simulation tools, including Legion. My main job is to support engineers and planners around the world to create and manage the future of transportation. Now let's celebrate projects. Let's celebrate success together. We can do that by creating a success story. So if you have worked on any, any interesting project that includes pedestrian simulation and crowd management and involved Legion software, it would be nice to showcase your work. So please contact me. We are more than happy to work with you to create a blog and publish it on our website and post it on our social media. The process is really simple. It takes not much from your time and I believe it is a fantastic opportunity to promote your work and services by leveraging Bentley's wide network of engineers, architects and planners. And here are some useful resources for the Legion software. First, uh, let me tell you that Legion is available on educational portal. So professors who, can, who want to teach pedestrian simulation using Legion you can use free Legion licenses for teaching purposes only. We have also a learn server for our Legion users where they can find useful courses to train themselves. It is also worth mentioning the YouTube channel where you can find some nice videos about the software, including a training on Legion 3D. And finally, we also have communities forum, which is a great place to get in touch with other users share techniques or even get peer-to-peer -peer help and opinions. You can also read about the latest news on the blogs or explore wiki pages that are available. Lastly, I would like to present to you the new commercial option that is available for Legion and which has become very popular nowadays. This is the Legion annual subscriptions. Uh, this can be bought directly through our store. And there are some nice things actually about the annual subscriptions. Firstly, they offer flexibility as there is no need to commit for a long time. If, for example, next year your workload is low, you can simply choose not to renew the subscription. And similarly, if you expect more projects in the pipeline, you can add more licenses anytime in the year. Secondly, there is no extra cost for maintenance, so they are cost effective. And most importantly, with every Legion annual subscription, 
You will also get several hours of free training, consulting or mentoring. So this is a great opportunity for everyone who is not very familiar with the Legion to train themselves for no extra cost. The good thing is also that this week, in order to celebrate Cyber Week, we offer 20% discount on all Bentley software that are available as annual subscriptions. And of course, that includes the Legion software. So timing could not be perfect. Feel free to scan the QR code and visit the e-store. Now it's time for the first poll question. There will be another one after Enrique's uh, presentation. So let me quickly launch it. So for the first poll question, we would like to know if you are using pedestrian simulation and crowd management software for your infrastructure projects. Please tell us how, uh, if you have ever used pedestrian simulation and crowd management so that we know more about you in order to uh, maybe organize follow-up webinars in the coming days. I see that 50% uh, of people has already voted, so I'll give it a bit of time for the remaining people to also vote. 80% of people has already voted, so thank you very much. 20 more seconds and then we can proceed with uh, the interesting part with Enrique's presentation. So please tell us if you have used pedestrian simulation and crowd management software for your infrastructure projects. Five more seconds and then I will hand it over to Enrique. Perfect, so thank you everyone who has uh, answered this uh, question. I will close it now and I will uh, make you Enrique uh, presenter so that you can share your screen. Just a moment. So Enrique, I think you now have access to share your screen. Um, let me know if that works. You can also unmute yourself. Yep. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. I think I'm doing that now. Can, can, are you able to see it? Can you please confirm? Yes. Yes, Enrique, we can see your screen. Thank you. Okay. So, um, what it is? Uh, oops. Um, yeah, this is Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, and what we're going to talk about uh, today is how we have actually deployed uh, Legion software uh, to to work on the new stadium, um, and, and not just on on the design stage, but also on the um, on the uh, let me just sorry on the design stage, but also on the construction and operation. So we're going to talk briefly about ourselves, about Buchanan, uh, who we are, then about Legion, some basics for those of you who don't know how it actually works, simulation engine, and then we'll talk about the project itself, the, the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium and how we've used it and uh, and, and, and some conclusions. Um, as Mario mentioned, we are a transport planning consultancy. Um, today we celebrate the the 60th anniversary of uh, this traffic in towns report which uh, uh, saw us um, birth really gave, gave us birth uh, in 1964 uh, and uh, this is also named the Buchanan's report and basically has transformed uh, mobility uh, uh, urban mobility in, in many cities around the world and is constantly um, uh, referenced in, in, in all public and, and uh, public transport and urban planning um, um, uh, forums. So, how is it uh, that we uh, help a stadia and sports venues, operators, uh, infrastructure managers? Basically, we support the planning uh, and, and design of, of new venues. Uh, right through from visibility from visibility to construction uh, we, we also help uh, stadium that uh, haven't been built already and are on the on the drawing board so 
we can actually help optimizing the operations, the space for commercial performance and visitor experience. And uh, well, a, a stadium no longer just um, a show uh, sports uh, sports events, but also concerts and and and, and another type of events that. So, um, and, and where do we act to actually act in stadium? In stadium, uh, we can work on precinct, that's the surrounding of the stadium. That's where we do our, um, uh, from the crowd analytics perspective, we need to find out where do they go, where do they come from actually as well, uh, to identify the densities, the levels of service, the walking speed, the speed, the space utilization, for emergency evacuation, that's a different type of analysis, uh, but it's, it's more or less the same. What routes are going to be used uh, for for evacuating the stadium? Are, are they uh, wide enough? Uh, do, do they uh, have the capability of managing such uh, large flows in in uh, in such a hurry uh, circumstances? Let's say, and then ingress also um, uh, simulation. Uh, how do we actually uh, enter the stadium? And as I mentioned earlier, through construction, but also um, how do we actually, uh, at half time, the commercial operation can actually benefit from the analysis that we carry out? Bars, shops, uh, um, how do we actually, after the event, access uh, the public transport? Because when we enter the stadium, we normally, um, have a distribution that allows for uh, for the public transport to cope with it. But what happens when uh, 80, 90,000 spectators live at once and they all go through the uh, adjacent transport network? So how does uh, Legion work? Uh, basically, uh, in Legion, we consider uh, that walking has a cost that uh, we, we call it insatisfaction. As if we were talking of um, uh, utility uh, cost function, uh, we uh, sort of uh, derive that cost in three main variables. The main one, the first one is frustration, which is the preferred, the deviation from the preferred walking speed. Each of us have our own. We introduce here um, a bottleneck, uh, we have uh, passengers going from one place to the other, or entities, or agents as we call them, entities, but uh, they have to slow down because of that bottleneck and that creates stress for them. The second one is inconvenience, which is the deviation from the preferred direction. We all think we walk in straight lines, which we don't, <laughs> but, uh, but certainly if we have to sway uh, our way across a certain corridor because there are uh, obstacles that we need to avoid that also causes stress. So that's the second variable. And finally is the discomfort, which is a deviation from the preferred uh, personal space. We all have our own. We are even prepared to walk a bit faster to have more space. What happens when we densify ourselves with other fellow um, uh, passengers or or spectators is that we we get crowded and, and we dislike that. Um, but again, uh, because this is a utility cost function, uh, every entity has to take a compromise decision as to what step to take in a crowded environment. Okay. So what does Legion? What Legion does is if we take that uh, that entity there that is surrounded uh, in, or encircled. Imagine it needs to get across the screen. Uh, what it is going to do is, is going to do an immediate uh, or a scanner of its, its immediate surroundings, and then it's going to identify the position of, and that trajectory of uh, other fellow uh, entities to check if it's actually uh, coinciding with its own uh, trajectory. Because it may well be that if that's the case, the cost, the total cost of actually colliding with someone would be so great 
that is constantly at every uh, 0.6 seconds, which is more or less the time we take to, to give a step, um, uh, is, is going to make an informed decision based on those three variables. So what you end up with here uh, in this example is uh, it's an entity that has traveled 1.62 meters in those six seconds. It's not the uh, fastest uh, way, it's not the straightest way, but it's certainly the one that has least cost. And that's exactly what we people do when we work. And that's what we call uh, entity emergence uh, behavior. And, and I'm finishing here with the theory um, behind the, the simulation engine. If we release those passengers in green in clockwise direction, in red in anti-clockwise, uh, from the top of the circle uh, or the ring, initially they merge uh, in a sort of erratic way uh, until they realize they can organize themselves in queues, in lines. Uh, what's important here is that they are not doing so uh, in a collective way. We, we are not actually forcing people to, 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 to form queues here, but uh, it is them, you know, the entities themselves individually that they uh, evaluate the conditions around them and take the decision to actually uh, place themselves behind someone that is already in the same direction, perhaps is not going at the uh, preferred speed that that entity has, but uh, anyway, it, it's, it's kind of uh, flowing and that's the most important thing. So what we do is we actually need to translate all these into metrics that we can use uh, and that uh, give us information about how a particular space is performing when we actually put it to the test with crowds, okay? So there are these things called, or these metrics called level of service, um, uh, where they, they range from A to uh, F level, being A level, a sort of free circulation that you could actually walk in, you know, imagine through a one corridor, and if halfway through the corridor you decide to stop or, or even turn 180 degrees, you could do so without actually uh, being, um, you know, uh, collide or colliding with any other fellow um, fellow passenger. That uh, changes uh, according to the level of service, and, and the, the the lower the level of service. Uh, the the least a bit ability, a, a ability for pedestrians to uh, to actually move freely. Level of service F would be really that you are no longer behaving individually. You cannot change your direction, but you sort of behave like a fluid. If uh, the crowd goes in one direction, there's nothing you can do but to uh, to do exactly as. Uh, as, uh, as the crowd does, as if you were a solid element of that um, of that crowd. Right, so uh, we're going to talk about the Bernabeu. Uh, we've used Legion in many uh, projects, uh, transport, sort of uh, uh, places where large numbers of crowds of pedestrians gather, of people. For a particular purpose. In this case, it's very obvious. Um, uh, and when we were approached uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to sort of help uh, the designer of the new stadium, uh, we obviously uh, recommended immediately to use Legion because it's the, the software that, uh, from our perspective, uh, reflects human behavior better than anyone. It's the most sophisticated tool in, in the world for, for such purpose. So a bit of history. This is the stadium. In 1947, it gets built. You can see um, from the top of the picture that uh, there, there is sort of a, a motor we being built there. That's Paseo Castellana, which was uh, at the very uh, outskirts of, uh, of Madrid in the northern side of the city well away uh, from the town centre, only accessible by car, really, <clears throat> at the time in perhaps uh, public transport. 
but what happens the the stadium grows as the city grows in sort of a, in matter of years the the, the the city center has sort of engulfed uh, the um, the stadium and is now uh, a part uh, an integral part of of the of the town center we remain like this um, you know with sort of uh, improvements uh, on on the access but also on on the capacity of the stadium up until the late uh, 2010s but then um, there was uh, a need uh, for or you know uh, to, to actually refurbish the stadium ensuring that uh, it remains at the very same location that Clearly, it's got to be something else than just uh, a stadium that opens for uh, weekend matches and Champions League games. But uh, certainly, something else could be could be done there. And this is what they came up with. This is the um, the new Bernabeu Stadium, as they envisaged. Uh, it's the future. Is the now. Um, okay, very very nice design in my opinion, but that's uh, but for you know everyone's taste. Uh, but you know what's important there, and and I actually asked about uh, about uh, the future stadium to AI. It actually came up with the ideas as to how it would look like, and uh, yes, th th this is sort of what it gave me. Uh, sort of a neon stadium you know where you are actually seeing lots of people there lots of spectators perhaps watching a football game or, or any other type of event um i like very much the uh, the, the the larger uh, the large size picture there because it shows just the pitch you know it's a kind of a regular stadium but you can actually see that underneath uh, things are happening there and there are perhaps shops, restaurants. Uh, so the stadium is got to be used for something else. And this is uh, what uh, Santiago Bernabeu uh, Stadium is gonna be like. This is how Real Madrid envisaged this stadium should look like. To do that, uh, they have um, uh, removed, uh, or they, they, they projected a retractable beach so that the turf could uh, be be sort of uh, hidden away after every every football game and be kept. You know, I'm not going to enter into the detail of it, but be kept um, away and uh, properly maintained with the light, moisture, and, and humidity, and and, uh, and daylight or sunlight or well, or artificial light, as a matter of fact. But never mind. Uh, the idea was to be able to use the space. Uh, for something else, or the space of pitch. Okay, so uh, the, there are plans for uh, the NFL to be there. Of course, uh, concerts. Taylor Swift uh, is uh, giving a concert next year, next year, but also tennis uh, matches uh, of uh, any any type. And of course, they want an immersive experience. Uh, not only you you go there for the uh, football game, but also, you, you're able to see the museum, which is an immersive museum and, you know, lots of plans there with a skywalk around the top of the of the stadium next to the roof. So you can actually enjoy there um, uh, whilst the game or, or not even during the game, but, but right after. So the idea, again, is to ensure that uh, instead of being used uh, every weekend, or every other weekend, it can be sort of uh, deployed uh, for uh, multi-purpose uses every every sort of week. So this is what we were facing um, uh, when we approach uh, the um, the project, and we we first uh, had to deal with the design stage, uh, which uh, was like a four-year project. It's now a bit more than four years, actually. It was envisaged that it would cost 500 million and is now 1,000, and it's almost stable, 170 million. Uh, the idea was to keep the envelope, so, sorry, to, to keep the stadium, uh, but uh, to create uh, an envelope uh, for it, modificating or altering the, the, uh, the escape routes and improving the pedestrian environment uh, all around. 
Again, uh, also it was uh, agreed that the uh, metro station next to the stadium, which is literally uh, next to it, uh, it should also be refurbished, um, increasing its size uh, almost by uh, by three, uh, three times as, as large. Um, problem here, well, problem and opportunity, I guess, was that uh, during construction, uh, COVID uh, came in and, um, well, that affect uh, the way that the uh, works were planned and the way that the stadium was going to be used. And that's where we also uh, helped the project. So uh, these are the three stages that uh, we're going we gonna to explain here. First one is the, um, the, uh, the, the actual design of the, of, the state, of the stadium, the interior. We needed to ensure that uh, during um, that we, we built a digital twin of the existing stadium right before uh, works begun. And with that one, we, we used it to test what the new design uh, would look like uh, in terms of uh, passenger flows. So uh, we, we were very clear, we were made very clear that it needed to ensure that evacuation conditions uh, didn't worsen. And not only did not worse, uh, worsen, but also will actually perform, uh, improve their, their performance. And the, the, um, the amount of time uh, used to evacuate uh, the, the, the spectators, the same amount of spectators in the existing design uh, was actually uh, improved uh, with the new design. Okay. Also, uh, we needed to use, um, uh, to integrate our evacuation strategy, our evacuation models with, um, um, how you call this, uh, S -S -F -C -D models. Uh, what it is, is um, we needed to test, to put the stadium to the test in terms of how would it actually uh, uh, behave or how many passengers would actually be able to evacuate the stadium if uh, a fire event happened at several locations. So we actually used the outputs of the um, uh, fire simulation models to uh, em em embrace uh, to embrace our uh, or actually to engage with our uh, pedestrian simulation models to ensure that uh, the escape routes were sufficiently designed and uh, in terms of width and uh, availability for the escape routes to be used um, effectively okay um then uh, throughout the construction stages, uh, we were dealing with the design, uh, with the planning stage, but then the stadium needed to get built. And, um, and you can see there in, from this picture and from the, the previous video, how um, uh, spectators were accessing the stadium and to, to watch uh, the games and uh, and they were doing so in a construction environment, sort of in a construction site. Every game, uh, 48 hours before the game, uh, all the plants around the stadium, around the precinct, needed to be cleared so that uh, the access gates were free of obstacles so that spectators could access them. Of course, not all of them were available at the time because uh, during the different stages and um, the availability of those doors of those gates uh, changed and we actually uh, needed to adapt you can see there the uh, new towers that were going to be built uh, whilst the other ones were going to be demolished uh, still in use obviously as you can see as you can see here uh, but we also faced uh, covid as well uh, as I mentioned, that's implied that uh, the stadium could only, once the restrictions, the social distancing restrictions were not so severe, and games uh, came back to the stadium, and 
it's uh, gradually open or reopened for public. So we actually assisted the club, uh, Real Madrid, in uh, providing advice based on pedestrian simulations on how uh, well the space could be used in a safe uh, in a safe way. Uh, we we had to um, actually uh, go there uh, several times, uh, record how pedestrians, how passengers, oh, sorry, how spectators uh, left left at the stadium, and how time took them to do so, where the um, the uh, pinch points happened, the congested areas, uh, because we would need that information to calibrate uh, to calibrate the model. Uh, and it is from from those models that we actually uh, advise not just the club, but also uh, the emergency services, including police and and uh, those in charge of managing the sites where um, uh, improvements should uh, should be done through to, to ensure that the flows didn't actually uh, densify themselves beyond uh, what uh, what it was considered acceptable. Okay. So this is uh, this is an example uh, of a particular corner uh, that uh, we that we also um, model. Um, and again, we needed to ensure that after the game, uh, the spectators could reach the the uh, their um, public transport, and that's um, the metro station. So uh, we've uh, we've kept working on the project, not this time for for the designers or for the club, but uh, actually for the metro operator for Metro Madrid, uh, in ensuring that the new station is able to cope with the uh, with the demand that is envisaged. It will uh, it will be using the, the new state the new station after the the stadium comes in in full operation. Okay. So that's uh, that's what we've done as well. We have um, used uh, Legion, not, not just our knowledge on, on um, railway and metro um, and micro simulation, but also uh, the knowledge that we acquired on how pedestrians behaved uh, or passengers behaved uh, from com coming from the stadium was actually uh, very useful. Okay. So, um, to conclude, um, we have uh, used uh, BIM, uh, the integration of BIM with, uh, with uh, GIS, with uh, obviously Legion has proved extremely uh, useful. That's the way forward. That's where we are heading to. Um, it's, it's sort of more required, more, more than ever, we feel that the integration that uh, uh, the, the performance-based design, such as Legion can uh, or analysis can actually uh, bring to the project to enhance uh, the quality. In the end, we are um, we are planning ahead. We don't we don't want to uh, to react to events uh, happening from uh, or resulting from uh, crowd congestion, especially if we can. Uh, predict, uh, which is uh, what would we use Legion for. Uh, we've been highly praised by by all three clients uh, on this uh, project because uh, we've provided uh, useful information for them to take the right decisions at the different stages. And we couldn't, we weren't, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do so if we hadn't used. Uh, the digital uh, twins um, that we created with Legion, okay, and and this is it. What what you can see there, uh, and perhaps uh, has nothing has nothing to do with uh, with um, Madrid, uh, but that's the Eiffel Tower. I was talking the other day to someone else. Uh, Paris is highly recognizable by the Eiffel Tower. So is London with uh, the Big Ben. Madrid uh, didn't had up until now. Uh, such a, a monument, let's say, for, for visitors to, to, to go and, and, and see. Now, now we will do. Uh, the stadium is almost complete now, and uh, it's clearly uh, is clearly projected to be 
one of the main attractions and is going to generate lots of uh, lots of revenue for the club. Uh, I also show here Atletico Madrid Stadium that uh, we we also did some work for it and uh, uh, with uh, with the pedestrian simulation techniques and they are Atletico Madrid. Um, so um, yes, it's a uh, this is also a brand new stadium uh, that uh, opened not so many years ago, uh, and obviously a pedestrian simulation was also used, as it was um, with Legion on the Yankee Stadium, uh, as you can see here, um, how it, it interacts with traffic. This is actually something that we have to deal as well uh, when uh, doing our pedestrian analysis for the Bernabeu Stadium, as is very close to that Paseo Castellana uh, uh, highway, uh, with lots of pedestrian crossing, uh, uh, which are uh, signaled, uh, traffic signal controlled, etc. Uh, similar to the, um, uh, to, to the West Ham United, uh, where we carried out a bottleneck analysis with, uh, with Legion, and um, in the, the Nest Stadium uh, in Beijing for the Olympic Games. Uh, Legion has been used uh, for uh, every Olympic game uh, since uh, the year 2000 in Sydney, uh, and it continues to do so. And uh, Football Cup, uh, World Cup, uh, is, is been also used. And, and this is for, for the Nets, uh, New York Nets Stadium. Uh, what we're showing is um, the importance of ensuring that crowds aggressing stadium can actually reach a metro station. This is very similar to what we faced in Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, what we're showing here, obviously at high speed, uh, is um, those pedestrians that are actually stop uh, or uh, have to wait standing uh, trying to access the metro station they are, they are showing in red if they are uh, if they wait more than two seconds. Uh, trying, um, I mean, waiting or standing at a place that is designed for such purpose, like a platform, is not a problem. Uh, it is a problem indeed, or it can become a, a real problem if uh, if that space is not designed for standing or waiting. And that's the very case we see here next to escalator uh, you don't want to to wait there so uh, it was used actually to to identify and minimize uh, their risk and this is it uh, thank you very much uh, if you if you have any questions now i would be more than happy to uh, to to help you um answering those hopefully thank you very much Thank you, thank you, Enrique, very much. Uh, let me make myself presenter again and share my screen uh, very quickly. So, uh, yeah, it was a really nice presentation, a very interesting topic. Uh, honestly, I can't wait to go to visit the stadium next time I, I am in Madrid uh, and see all these nice features that you have presented. It seems to me that now stadiums really need to adapt to new demands and um, we need to uh, transform them using dedicated tools because uh, we need to build uh, stadiums today that are used for many purposes apart, as you said, from hosting games every other week. Now, uh, let me launch the second poll question, the last one for today, I promise. Um, so, Based on Enrique's presentation, do you think that the Legion software can support you on your infrastructure project? So uh, I will give you some time to answer this. Uh, do you think that it can help you? Definitely not sure. And you'd like to learn more from an expert, so we'll get in touch with you or no. See that half of people have already voted. Uh, after this poll question, we'll uh, go to the Q&A session. I think it will be nice to hear from you what questions you have about Enrique's presentation. So I'll give you 20 more seconds and then we can go to the Q&A session. It's very uh, positive, by the way, that most of you are saying that yes and that you would like to learn more from an expert about how Legion can be used. 
to support you. Perfect, so I'll close it. Um, very quickly, I forgot to mention about the poll, so please scan this QR code and tell us your thoughts about the webinar, whether you liked it or what we need to improve for next time. And uh, maybe there is a request for a follow-up. I'll give you again some time to answer. There are three, I think, questions that you'll need to answer. And then we'll proceed to, to the final uh, part of this event. So if you can just scan the QR code and let us know your thoughts and then we can move. I also see that there have been uh, some questions already in, in the chat, so we'll make sure to answer them. Okay, great. So let me move it to the next slide. Enrique, uh, I think we are ready. Oh, let me turn, turn on the camera. I forgot to turn it on. Uh, I think we can start with the Q&A session. We have several minutes, right? Okay. So the first question is, uh, what type of input does someone need in order to build a model, a pedestrian simulation model for, let's say, stadium evacuation? Could you please elaborate on that? Well, uh, it depends, obviously, if the stadium is already built. Uh, or if it's uh, or if it is not, if it's uh, if it's built um, and it's going to be transformed as the one uh, we just talked about as the Bernabeu Stadium, uh, what we need to do is to basically we need demand. We we need to know how many uh, uh, passengers sorry sorry spectators uh, are uh, using the stadium what gates they use to evacuate, to egress. Uh, we also need to, to be able to sort of um, uh, characterize as well the type of entity, because we are not uh, the same. Uh, we don't have the same walking abilities. So we need to come up with, uh, perhaps if the stadium is new, that information uh, we can go and observe. Uh, and, and, and we can actually um, uh, also use it for calibration purposes, okay? So um, it depends on the cases, really? Yes, it depends on the cases. If it was a new stadium, uh, we would obviously, uh, we needed to, uh, to come up with some assumptions as well. The demand obviously would be there, because they, 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 uh, they, they will know where the, the terraces would be and the, the gates as well. Uh, but in terms of uh, how, uh, how uh, spectators would behave, we would need to, to make some assumptions uh, based on experience. Thank you, Enrique. Another question is that we know that some stadiums around the world have good access, right? And in some cases, people prefer to walk or even use cycling. So how can you use Legion in Stadia where the access to uh, the stadium itself is mostly done with cars? Yes, um, there is a trend, right, so for, for some stadiums uh, to be relocated from town centres to the uh, to the outskirts. Uh, that solves the problem um, uh, relatively, you know, they, because uh, uh, they they are sort of more accessible now through uh, private cars. Through, um, uh, but um, uh, in the city centres, obviously, where uh, accessibility is granted by public transport. It is crucial to take into account uh, that uh, our, uh, let's say, clients, uh, the spectators, uh, will will be so not just uh, during the, the during the game, well, the, using the infrastructure, but also uh, how they actually uh, access the stadium and how do they leave the stadium. So it's important, and we we can actually. Uh, help taking informed decisions with uh, transport authorities as well on what would be the uh, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the capability of the transit system. That's exactly what we did in, in Madrid. Perfect. Thank you, Enrique. There are a couple of questions actually about uh, safety and security. So 
uh, I, I read in the news recently that the uh, FIFA regulations are uh, more strict nowadays than it used to be in the past, obviously. Uh, so uh, how can you include that in, in simulation with Legion? And did you see, did you test that also in the San Diego Bernabeu case and was the result a surprise to you? Well, um, safety regulations uh, were actually stri more strict uh, now than, than than before, okay? uh, because the uh, yes, uh, the building code changes, and uh, you know when stadium gets built uh, 70 years ago uh, or 80 years ago, um, was done with a particular um, uh, criteria, and and that has changed. Of course, we can adapt. Uh, we can ensure that uh, uh, we 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 keep uh, the the uh, safety regulations um, in place to reflect uh, that the pedestrian model is actually uh, performing within the times that have been uh, set up already uh, by the norm. And, and we've done that uh, obviously in that stadium as well. Perfect. Um, about, I think you, you showed a slide about uh, the transit station that was nearby the stadium. So, uh, in order for us to understand the behavior around the transit station, do you normally collaborate with a local transit operator and uh, did, do they also use this kind of modeling approach in order to ensure uh, a safe and yes. efficient access of yes. people? That, that, that is correct. That is correct. And um, it's actually quite nice the fact that um, uh, you you are faced with a project of uh, such nature where both clients have already are already familiar with uh, with uh, pedestrian simulation, but, but also with Legion. Uh, Madrid Metro uh, has been using Legion for more than twenty years. And uh, the fact that we engaged uh, with the club with Real Madrid, to also use Legion and they build, you know, uh, a sort of um, straight communication between both both parties. It was very clear uh, uh, for everyone, uh, you know, where the risks were, and, um, and to be able to to actually to trust the the, the results, the outcomes of the model uh, immediately and act uh, quickly. Okay. Uh, during the design and planning stages. Yes. Yes. Um, Enrique, another question is about. Um, so obviously, you did. A, you created a digital twin, as you said, from uh, from the stadium. And after you tested different scenarios and you ran analysis, did you come up with any design changes as a result of pedestrian simulation? Um, yes, um, we could. I mean, uh, in, in the case of the, at the design stage, uh, truth is that um, uh, we were working with the uh, with the, uh, the architects, the engineers, obviously behind the design of the project, and they were very knowledgeable. Uh, so when we actually tested the, um, the their designs with Legion, uh, they worked. They work really nice. Again, they they are very knowledgeable on how uh, the new spaces uh, should be designed to accommodate uh, pedestrian flows in in a safer way. So that obviously uh, helped a lot. But we certainly identified uh, certain bottlenecks at design stage uh, that needed um, uh, to be sort of uh, readjusted. Uh, be, before they actually go build, certainly, yes. So a follow-up uh, question on that, Enrique, uh, because uh, you mentioned that you could compare new and old designs by using Legion and pedestrian simulation. Uh, how accurate are, are these? Uh, how accurate these comparisons are? Between, sorry, Legion and? Uh, between old designs and the new designs that you propose as a result of pedestrian simulation of running uh, these different tests. If you could elaborate a bit more on this process, because people really want to know about that. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, when we when we build 
a, a digital model um, for an existing stadium, uh, uh, where which we know is going to be uh, is going to change in the following years. Um, the main source of information for us is how the stadium is used uh, before it is actually changed into the new uh, design. Uh, to acquire all that knowledge, we needed to ensure that uh, we take the right observations. We have done an extensive uh, work of observation, analysis, video uh, uh, recording and, 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 and visualization, uh, because that uh, actually not only showed us where the existing um, uh, problems happened in the in the old stadium, but also how uh, the spectators to the to the games uh, uh, acted and and uh, how they interpreted the the stadium and the surroundings. Okay, so uh, when we build the digital twin uh, of that stadium and uh, we introduce the changes uh, in the in the design we were actually able to see um because we, we were checking as well you see during construction how uh, our designs uh, or our simulations were performing we could actually uh, if we recommended a particular um uh, scheme uh, on let's say the southwest corner of the stadium you know at the crest time uh, what would be uh, the implication? We, we predicted it with Legion, but then we had to go there as well and, um, and, 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 and check and check with the officials from the club as well uh, to see that uh, you know, the, 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 um, the place was actually performing as we had envisaged it. So in that sense, um, uh, Legion was very, very useful, and and uh, yes, our work was, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, very well acknowledged by the client and uh, and the tool itself. And we've been, um, you know, the, this project in particular with the during the construction stages, we've been with the with the club for for almost three years. Um, uh, so. Uh, that obviously means one thing, and is that uh, they have trusted uh, the work we've done with Legion at every single stage. Otherwise, they would have said, uh, "Okay, don't come back." Absolutely, yeah. Uh, uh, because uh, when when we talk about stadiums, uh, most of the times uh, we talk about big crowds, like uh, hundred thousand people could potentially attend uh, an event there. So. Can can you can Legion handle this big number of people? And w when it comes down to uh, running time and performance, how good is it? Like, do you do you run different scenarios uh, fast enough in order to to test as many uh, alternatives as possible? Uh, yes, I mean now it's not a stadium. Obviously, in a stadium, in, in a very short period of time, in in twenty minutes, less than twenty minutes. You have to deal with flows of, you know, close to 100,000 uh, spectators. Um, when we deal with, um, we are dealing now with a station, a metro station in Santiago, Chile, that uh, has to handle um, 86,500 passengers per hour. That's almost uh, half a million a day. Okay. Um, we uh, we can manage obviously those flows within Legion. There is no limit. There is no restriction. And uh, and what's important as well and is becoming uh, more and more important is that how we can actually integrate those um, those uh, spectators uh, when they leave the stadium uh, with the uh, existing surroundings because uh, their traffic. Uh, Conditions there that affect affect also uh, the uh, dissemination flows through the streets, through the adjacent streets, and 
and we need to ensure that the network doesn't collapse so we can easily integrate as well our pedestrian models with uh, traffic models uh, as we have done uh, so basically there, there is no limit in how many people could uh, could model depending no, on no. your case perfect uh, there are a couple of questions about pricing commercial options and training so uh, we'll uh, come back to you offline about that uh, i also mentioned that enrique and his colleagues are uh, quite often organizing training courses right uh, i think there was one that you have organized recently in madrid if i'm not mistaken but you can also do it online if there is that's right that. we have we have um uh trained in in, in person uh about uh, six people uh, recently or five six people um but also uh, we have uh, we have trained a team of uh, nine uh, officials of a metro organization uh, railway um uh, remotely okay uh, from madrid and uh, that's uh, you know like live training but uh, it's on streaming okay so yes. and, and it works perfectly we provide the licenses so everyone uh, can follow and, and we have our own methodology uh, to ensure that everyone keeps on, on you know the right track yeah. and you can do it both in uh, english and spanish absolutely um i think we have uh, some time for uh, several more a few more questions if you don't mind enrique because as i said there is a lot of interest from the audience uh, so what you have presented is a case studies from stadiums uh, not only santiago bernabeu you mentioned atletico madrid uh, stadium yankees uh, brooklyn nets i think what other of projects can you work on with legion uh, can you name like different areas where uh, this software can be used? I guess when in areas where we have big crowds of people. Yes, I mean obviously the first ones we think of are uh, major transport interchanges like um, uh, metro, railways, stations. We are actually doing uh, several metros now at the moment in in, in Peru in in Lima, in Santiago, Chile, and we're also working in Jerusalem. Uh, we are working as well, well, in Barcelona, That those are metro projects or railway projects, but also uh, we have a very interesting project now in Barcelona. Uh, we've been asked by, um, by officials to, to determine the impact of um, guided uh, or tourist guided groups uh, in this in these uh, streets of Barcelona town center because uh, you know it's becoming uh, more and more a problem uh, for especially local residents and we've used it there uh, we've used it as well uh, well perhaps it's um we, we had an event uh, and a very unfortunate event in in Seoul uh, last year right where about 150 people died uh, because they they, they crashed, uh, you know, in a in, in a sort of a stampede um, uh, in the town centre um, where they were gathering for Halloween celebration. We do have lots of uh, celebrations uh, of that sort in Spain, with uh, you know lots of um, people gathering in the streets and in the sort of parading as well. Uh, we've used it there as well. So, um, and uh, we've used it uh, on airports uh, as well, on uh, exhibition halls like uh, like Bema here, the, the main exhibition hall um, that there is uh, for different type of events, uh, whether it be in a concert, an exhibition. We even used it on museums such as the Tate or the Met. Uh, the, 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 the purpose there is different. We are not focusing on how many uh, people we can get in, but what's the user experience to ensure that they are able to, to enjoy the place, to enjoy the, uh, the uh, arts scene, uh, you know, without being uh, crowded, uh, uh, perhaps, you know, through allocating different or staggering accessing 
to the uh, to the uh, museum uh, to ensure a, a better experience. But yes, so uh, several uh, uses, several events, uh, in, well, all around. Well, yeah, I would say that uh, this type of solutions can be used to ensure the safe and efficient movement of people where you have big crowds of people, really. Um, perhaps uh, one last question uh, before sure. we end this webinar, and then if we have unanswered questions, we'll make sure to follow up uh, directly. Uh, so you presented the, the case of Santiago Bernabe, one of the most prestigious, I guess, uh, stadiums in the world. Do you think that uh, more stadiums around the world will follow the example of Real Madrid meaning that they will use this type of uh, modeling approach in order to uh, to model people behavior and make sure that the stadium is also going to be used for other purposes. What do you think is the future of stadiums? Of course, I mean, we, we, especially because, you know, uh, before we were dealing just with, um, let's say, um, uh, football game uh, goers, okay? Uh, you know, very specific type of, um, uh, let's say, audience of uh, entities, as we call them. But uh, when you uh, want to uh, use your space, when you or when your space to be used by uh, any other type of people, because the, the events that you plan for that event are also different, like concert goer uh, will certainly behave differently. Um, the, the the way that um, uh, it recognizes the space is very different from someone who attends uh, the pitch every uh, the stadium every uh, other weekend and knows exactly where it goes. So we are dealing with different spectators and also uh, with different type of events. So clearly, um, uh, um, what was Taylor Swift uh, concert will gather different type of audience than um, uh, a tennis uh, game okay. uh, and, and yeah. we are able to to um, characterize the, the different capabilities and how they use the space. I'm a big fan of basketball and I think I read somewhere that there are, there are plans that uh, they will host an NBA game exhibition game in Santiago Bernabeu so that will be amazing they can use yes. uh, these venues for any type of events really uh, I think we can uh, finish end this webinar, Enrique. We are in the top of the hour. Do um, okay. you have any final remarks? Well, um, obviously, if you have any any questions, you can address them uh, through through you know Mario, so directly through myself. I would be more than happy uh, to to guide you, you know, as to what are your needs uh, for pedestrian simulation. Uh, or training, and, uh, and and if you're in doubt or anything, just just come and talk to us. And, uh, we we certainly are here to help, and uh, and we are helping actually because that's that's you know uh, what our clients um, like about us that you know we help them take decisions that otherwise would cost them dearly. Exactly. We are here to support everyone and especially when it comes to infrastructure projects. I would like first of all to thank everyone who has attended this webinar. Thanks for your attention and for your questions and for answering the poll questions. We really appreciate that. As I said, this is a feedback loop for us in order to make next webinars and events um, uh, tailored to your needs. Of course, a big thank you to Enrique uh, and his team that has worked in this amazing project and uh, for sharing your experiences. And uh, stay tuned, we will follow up with uh, links uh, for the on-demand uh, version of this webinar, so you can watch it, you can watch it or you can share it with your colleagues anytime. And uh, we will follow up uh, with anyone who has asked a question and we didn't have time to answer. Thank you very much and have a great day, everyone. Thank you.